Hello, this is Latonya Bernard, and I am wanting to know if anyone has ever used Google Hangout as a platform to do tutorials online with students. Um, it seems like a really nice program, but I just, before I do it, I really would like to have some input from others who might have used it in the past. When beginning a Google Hangout spot, the hosts can invite people to participate. In this way, um, you could ask the students who need to have that particular tutorial to participate by sending them an email, um, just like inviting them so they know what time to come online and, and join the Hangout. Um, this particular page has one of my classes listed on here where the students can be seen and you can know who is being invited to come to that particular hangout. Um, it also has the option of being live broadcast on YouTube so that other people who might want to observe but not participate may also observe. Here's the place to add in addresses. You could choose the people to invite um, as students for tutorials or even if it's a planning committee. Um, and this is on air to go on YouTube for the live broadcast and also it does archive on YouTube as well. Okay. Once again, if you go into Google and you want to log in and invite people to come in to the Hangout, you can click on Invite People and enter their email addresses. Or if they're in your Google Circles, you can um, take them and send them in, in the whole circle an invitation to come in. So they're already in groups, and I suggest to do it by class period so that the entire class period might have one circle so that period could be invited. Um, other than that there's also several things that can be done in Google Documents. You can have live chats of course, um, the synchronous, synchronous conversations where we can actually do activities. Um, then you can have screen shares and import documents and things and everyone can share what's on their their board on their desktop. This is the board for desktop sharing. Anything that's on your desktop, you can open multiple windows and share what's at whatever is on your desktop. If someone is doing a presentation, they can open a presentation window and show whatever they want to show and share it with the the whole group. Um, PowerPoints, presentations, and things. Um, even if they, the whole group wanted to be able to manipulate it, they were able to do that as well. And you can also see that underneath there, whoever is speaking, their picture is also posted so everyone knows who's in control of the, of the desktop for the group. One feature of the sharing app application is the cameraman. The host person gets to choose who, how much access each person has, if they're going to be visible in the broadcast or not. Um, there, you can have everybody's picture showing at the bottom of the screen and click on the person who you want to talk so that their picture comes up and they get to speak at that particular time. Um, it's really a unique situation for younger children you know when you do distance learning adults they can get accustomed to it but our kids are already using a lot of these technologies so it's e good to be able to incorporate it into the learning environment and most of them like to be seen so this way they actually are motivated to participate because they want to get their picture on there it's called cameraman and also you can control the mic and if they can say if they're going to be heard or seen, but the host has ultimate control of the settings. 
and also there's an option to start the broadcast so that it can be live broadcast on YouTube or it could be a private um, conversation just within the the group. Another useful application is the Google Docs which is really good to use when working with groups for planning and in, ed in education. Um, I know I use Google Docs for my lessons but in Hangout Google Documents can be easily um, imported into the Hangout so that everyone who is participating in the discussion will have access and be able to see the the documents and also manipulate the documents if the um, host gives them permission to do so. Um, with this app, um, it could be PowerPoints, um, it could be spreadsheets, surveys, and even and other things. And anyone who is in the group can again add things from their Google Documents which is an added benefit of the program. For the benefit of saving time, um, the host can um, upload or load multiple documents in Quay so that when, or in Q, so that when the, um, they are doing their presentation, they don't have to wait for each individual document to open. Um, they could be all lined up and ready and all they have to do is click on it and then everyone will have access to those documents. YouTube, I've already mentioned, is used for the live broadcast and for archiving but it's also easy to incorporate YouTube videos and um, media into the Hangout by just simply clicking on a YouTube link that's already embedded into the program so that anyone can share videos as necessary. Um, in the educational thing, um, we always have some kind of video that we can use as teaching tools and this is one good easy way for everyone to see the same video at the same time by having it embedded in the Hangout even if that is a tutorial that's after school, the kids don't have to be roaming around looking for all different things. So the teacher has some kind of control of what's happening on the screen. Air broadcast in Hangout um, are really good things to have, especially if you have some students who don't really like to talk and they might be more bashful but then they could go back and they could watch the live broadcast and even maybe email questions and things that they had to the host instead of actually being a part of the actual event especially if they don't have video cameras and uh, microphones they may have this way if it's live broadcast they can watch it as if it were a television show and still be interactive with the class um, the, the one thing about the air broadcast is there are um, terms and agreements that are additional to the regular YouTube and Google terms and agreements and it's mainly saying that the host is responsible for making sure that whatever happens in that hangout abides by the Google terms. Um, we want to make sure everybody's safe and that the content is not plagiarized or harmful in any way to anyone. Sound effects are one of the um, extra benefits of using Google Docs. It has the smiley face effects and other things also, but the sound effects were something that I felt were really important. Then the reason is, is because it adds some comedy and emotion to just being dry and just talking about things and looking at pictures. Um, the sounds come, you, the kids can give each other a round of applause when someone does well. Um, anyone likes to, for their peers to approve of what they've done. So that's one of the better things about um, this particular program. It makes sure everyone is interactive. The Google Hangouts are also able to be publicized so that others who may want to make observations or get additional help can 
listen to our request to be invited. Um, a hangout that is made private can only be attended by someone who has permission from the host to participate. Um, it's one of the good things about having to invite people to attend. However, if someone is in the circle, then they can, you know, get they can make observations and actually watch what's happening in Hangout. I think this is really good for a parent involvement piece. The parents can have access and be able to see what their kids are doing in the tutorial, and they're able to go back and watch the archived broadcast. Um, for students who struggle in school and struggle in class and don't like to answer ask questions, this is a good way for their parents to have a way to learn about the content. I know a lot of things that the kids are learning now their parents didn't have to know when they were in school. So I think this is a really good thing for some parents that need some extra tutorials so they can help their kids. So here's the question or the group of questions. Should we Google Hangout or should we not Google Hangout as a means of tutorial after school where well, the kids can be at home supervised by their parents during the tutorial. Um, with the advancements in, ed in education, there are so many things that we can do with Google Hangout. Our kids are already technology wizards. So I think this is a way to reach them, especially some of the ones who don't behave in class. Um, could this benefit our kids? If, if they're already technology minded, the careers they're going to have are technology based. Most of them will probably attend college online. So would this be a way to get them already mind, in the mindset of the new forms of education? Um, Will students who seem to misbehave um, lose interest in and or lose interest in class become more engaged? And finally, if anyone has used Google Han Hangouts with their students or even in another forum with in a professional forum as a webinar or whatever, um, do you think that this would be a good remediation program for children who can't stay after school or especially like? the athletes who have practice after school that maybe they can get online for a, a couple of hours or so or 30 minutes when they get home just to get the answers that they need even if it's unstructured and they just can come in and ask questions about their homework would it be a good thing and if so how would you implement it in your program because this is something I really would like to do but I really need feedback from everyone to find out some ways that I can implement it. Thank you for uh, for watching my presentation and I hope that I've given if everyone some information about this program if you have not heard of it or have not used it in the past but I am really interested in having feedback from uh, whomever might be able to give me some direction about how this could be implemented as a remediation or tutorial program for my students.